How are we doing, everybody, tonight? Good, good to hear. And today we're going to be talking about it doesn't all depend on us. And when I say that, what are we talking about? We're talking about how do we share our faith. And it actually doesn't depend on who we are. Now to do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I graduated from Northern Illinois. When I was at Northern Illinois, I was an RA for three years. And as an RA, I had the opportunity to reach out and talk to people about my faith. Well, one time, my first year, one of my residents went home for spring break. And while she went home, while she was home, she was assaulted. A couple days later, she came back to the floor of her mother and they getting some things, and they saw me there. And the mother came up to me. She grabbed hold of me, began to cry, and she asked me, how could God let this happen to her baby? All I could say was, I don't know. But he loves her and continues to be by her side. And we held each other, and there was some silence and a little bit of a calming there for him. I can tell you one thing. I was not trained to handle a conversation like that as an RA. I had no prep. I had nothing to do. I had nothing, little thinking behind of what I would say in that situation. Yet what the Lord needed to be said was said. Which means for me, I am very thankful. It did not depend on me to know what to say. Yet when we talk about sharing our faith, a lot of people's stomachs start to turn a little bit. I don't want to do that. In fact, you start to think certain things. Like, for example, there we go, I'm not good enough. I can't be the one out there talking about Jesus to people. You might start to think something like, I'm no Bible study leader. I don't know the big words. I don't know how to discuss faith. I can't talk to people. Which means you end up thinking things like, there are better people out there than me. And what happens is, when these things start to go in your mind, you start to think that making or sharing your faith depends on you. Others out there in our church think different things. For example, they think about how they do bring people to worship. They might even bring people to G-Force. They're doing that. They're bringing people. But the problem is, it seems like the people, the ones they love, haven't connected yet with Jesus. They haven't made that transition. They haven't, that relationship yet. And when that doesn't happen, they start to think to themselves, what else can I do? There has to be something that I can do to make this happen. And when you start to say that, you start to make sharing your faith dependent on you. Now, some of you here might be visitors. Some of you might be guests. Some of you might be coming to Maple here for a few weeks now. You might be trying to wonder, who am I? Who is this Jesus, this relationship we talk about? Who is he to me? And the minute you start thinking about then you start asking the question, well, I think I might want to make this commitment. I think I want to have a relationship. So then, how do I tell people about it? How do I make this commitment to Jesus? And when you start thinking these things, you start to think that this relationship you have with Jesus depends on you. So then how do we share our faith? If that's all the things we're thinking about. Well, let's look at our gospel, which is in Mark chapter 7, and get an idea and see what Jesus actually did. So our gospel reading happened in northern Israel. Jesus gets up and walks to a place called Tyre and Sidon, which is that rectangular shape up there. This is also a place where the Phoenicians were in the times of the kingdoms. The Phoenicians were the enemies of the children of God, the nation of Israel. Jesus walks all the way up there. It also says he walks to a place called the Decapolis, which is over here. The Decapolis, like the Siren Time, is also a a mixture of Greek cities, ten cities to be exact. So where are these places compared to where Jesus has been so far? Well, let's say the Tyler campus is Capernaum, where Jesus has been teaching. Tyre and Sidon be like walking all the way, all the way out to El Dorado. 
Yeah, exactly. The Decapolis be like walking out to Derby. So Jesus doesn't just get up and walk to the next village. He goes on for a walk. And when he does that, our text tells us that he's met by a woman, a mother. And Mark describes who she is. He says this woman is Greek. She's a Gentile, non-Jewish. But where is she born from? Syrian Phoenicia. She's born from the same area where those enemies of God's people were. And here she is coming to Jesus, asking for help for her daughter. So how does Jesus respond when she asks for help? Well, he says this. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. What does that mean? Well, the idea of children, typically what what we understand that is, is that that's God's children, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people. So what's the bread? That's the good news, the gospel, that's Jesus. So Jesus is meant for the Jewish people, God's chosen people. And once he's gone to them, then it gets to go to the Gentiles. But what word is used for Gentiles? Dogs. And the reason why is for Jewish people in this time, Dogs were defilement. They were on the outskirts of the towns, tearing away carcasses. You didn't go near them. Jews also did not go near Gentiles. They didn't like them, so they called them dogs. So Jesus is using a stereotype that's typical for that age. But what's special is the word dogs there means something else if you're Greek or a Gentile. See, for Greeks, for Greeks and Gentiles, so non-Jewish people, There are dogs that are outside of the city that tear things up. But they also have these things called doggies, house pets. And these doggies were so loved by their masters, they were treated like actual children, that they got to sit at the feet of the master and eat the crumbs off the table. I've never heard of that before, right? People loving their dogs more than their kids. So to use this word, doggies, well, this woman picks up on it. And this is what she answers with. Lord, she replied, even the doggies under the table eat the children's crumbs. She understood the wordplay Jesus was using and answered back with it. Her and Jesus were on the same level of communication. What about our other story? Jesus goes down to Decapolis, 10 cities, Greek people. Everybody wants him to heal a whole bunch of people. And this group of family, of friends, brings her loved one to the actual feet of Jesus and says, please heal him. So what does Jesus do? He takes the man, who probably has no idea what's going on, takes him away from the crowd. When he takes him away, he takes his fingers, touches his ears. He spits (laughs) and touches his tongue. Now we look at that go, again, what is Jesus doing? Well, typically, this is actually signs of healing back then. Jesus is helping uh, helping this man who cannot hear, who really cannot speak, explain what's about to happen. I'm going to heal your ears. I'm going to heal your tongue. I'm going to do this by praying for you. So what does Jesus do? He looks up in sighs. A physical sign of prayer. Him and this man are communicating back and forth. Jesus is on his level. So what happens in our, both our stories? There's a healing. Jesus tells the mother that the demon has gone. Doesn't have to say leave. Doesn't have them to do anything else other than let her know that the demon is gone. What about this man he's about to heal? Jesus looks up to heaven and says, Ephatha be opened. His ears were open, his tongue was loose, and what the Bible says, the guy couldn't stop talking. The Lord's will was done for him. So what does that mean for us then, talking to people, reaching out? So for those who are worried about talking with people, have those worries on your heart. Let's look back at our gospel reading. Jesus did not talk to people on some high level, as a rabbi, some sophisticated way of understanding, he came down to them. 
He talked from the heart with them. It was clear. So when you go and talk with people, it's not about trying to be fancy. It's not about being that Bible study with those extra facts. It's about being who you are. But I know that doesn't change the fact you still have those worries right here. So I invite you, when you come up tonight for the Lord's Supper, to take those fears that are on your heart and lay it on the cross. For when you eat that body and drink the blood of our Lord, nor know that you are filled with him. And this week, if you have an opportunity to talk with people, that he is working through you to spread his gospel. Now those who are bringing people to church, those who are bringing people to Sunday school and doing what they can to help people, if we go back to our gospel reading, that's what those people did. They brought people to Jesus. You are not alone in this struggle. But what also happened? They were healed, not because the mother or the family members were good people. They were healed not because the little girl deserved it or because the guy deserved it. They were healed because the Lord willed it. See, we cannot put our faith, our trust in ourselves and what we do. Instead, the only person we can put our faith in is the will of the Lord in him. So that burden that you're holding right now onto as you're trying to help these people learn about Jesus, when you come up today for the Lord's Supper, put that at the foot of the cross. Take those burdens and leave them there. For when you take on the body and blood of our Lord, know that his will is done in your life as well as theirs. Now for those who are still trying to figure out their relationship with Jesus, who he is, what he means to them, you are not alone. There are people sitting here right now to support and be there for you. And if you feel comfortable, I welcome you to come up here to receive a blessing. To know that Jesus loves you and continues to be by your side. And as we leave and we go this week, know that it doesn't depend on us how we share our faith but knowing that we leave it to the Lord's will, for it will be done. Let us pray.